Good morning, everybody. Good morning. You are connected with us in our daily devotional. You're very welcome. It's been a great pleasure. I was just thinking here and myself that uh, we are being a long time in our daily devotional. And every single day, God has been supplying us with a brother or sister sharing his words, especially sharing from their hearts and letting us know what God has been speaking to them. And also, we have people doing sharing uh, amazing uh, worship songs with us, especially Jackie Elmore, who has been embracing with us this daily devotional. I hope you can be blessed this morning. We're going to have Dick Shannings sharing God's Word and Jackie Elmore sharing amazing worship songs. Let's pray. Lord, thank you very much again for this new day, new morning. The Bible says your mercy is renewed every single morning. So we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you in a way you've been blessing us in so many ways, individually, but also as a church. So I pray this morning asking you to speak to our hearts, Lord. Speak to us through Jake's shining words and want to grow spiritually, want to understand more about you, about your kingdom, what you, being, what you want to speak to us. So also I pray for the, the, the worship song Jackie will be shared with us, can bless us, can, can move our hearts. Lord, bless each one who is connected now with us and will be later on in our Grovener Church YouTube channel. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hello, everybody. I, I've been thinking of something that the Lord Jesus said to Simon Peter in the upper room at the Last Supper just before he was betrayed by Judas Iscariot. You find it in Luke 22. Simon, Jesus said, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you as wheat, but I've pleaded in prayer for you that your faith should not fail. So when you've repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. In the upper room, you remember Peter was feeling pretty strong. Lord, I'm ready to go to prison with you. I'm even ready to die with you. But you remember the Lord Jesus said, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the cock crows tomorrow morning, you will have denied me three times. I'm sure that Peter would have remembered those words. In fact, we know they do because um, it's, in the, it's in the story. The cock crew and the Lord turned and looked at Peter and Peter remembered. He remembered the words the Lord had spoken. Now, don't be too hard on Peter. The Gospel writers record that only he and possibly John actually ventured into the high priest's courtyard when Jesus was arrested. But I've often tried to imagine what Peter must have felt when the cock crew. Jesus said it would happen. Is there any hope for me now, he says. I, I, I've completely blown it. I mean, I was the one. I was the one who said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus congratulated me. I was there at the Transfiguration with James and John, listening to Jesus talking to Moses and Elijah. I was chosen with James and John to witness Jesus raising uh, Jairus' daughter from the dead. I was there with him in prayer in the garden last night. And now look at me. I denied him. I denied him with oaths and curses. We've no idea what Peter went through until he actually met the risen Lord Jesus. But maybe, maybe he should have remembered something else. He should have remembered what else the Lord Jesus had actually said to him. Peter, Peter, I'm praying for you. You will repent, you will be restored to me, and you will have a job to do in my name, to strengthen the faith of your brothers. And of course, that got me thinking. If Jesus prayed for Peter, is it possible that he might be praying for me, for you? Then I thought of the ascension of our Lord Jesus and all that that meant. And 
Of course, it signified, first of all, the completion of his earthly ministry. It is finished, the job done to perfection. But his ascension also resulted in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus said to his disciples, It's to your advantage that I go away, for if I don't go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I do go, he will come, because I will send him to you. The ascension signified the commencement of the Apostles' ministry in ours. It heralded the beginning of his heavenly ministry. But what is, what's our Lord Jesus doing right now? I'll tell you what he's doing. He's sitting down. We know this from the letter to the Hebrews at least four times. The sun is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he provided purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. But um, while, he, while he's sitting down, what, what's he doing? I believe he's praying. I believe he's praying for you, and I believe he's praying for me. The Bible calls it, the Bible calls it interceding. There's that lovely passage in the letter to the Romans, Romans chapter 8. What shall we say in response to all these things, says Paul? If God is, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It's God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? In the Passion Version, Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 says, Jesus is able now and forever to save from the punishment of sin all who come to God through him because he lives forever to pray for them. When John wrote his first letter, he said, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. I like that verse because it looks as though Jesus, Jesus is our advocate. He's our counsel for defence. He's our lawyer. He's the one who pleads our case. I guess if I were in court on a serious charge, it most certainly would do me no harm to have a defence lawyer who just happened to be the son of the judge. Think about that. We sing, Jesus is king and I will extol him. Give him the glory and honour his name. He reigns on high, enthroned in the heavens. Word of the Father exalted for us. We have a hope that's steadfast and certain, gone through the curtain and touching the throne. We have a priest who is there interceding, pouring his grace on our lives day by day. We also sing, before the throne of God above, I have a strong, a perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, up would I look and see him there who made an end of all my sin. The Lord Jesus didn't go back to heaven after his earthly ministry just to take a break from his people. No, he's right now interceding for us. Satan is doing exactly the opposite. He's accusing us. He's pointing out our sins and frailties before God, just as he did with Job. But the accusation fall on deaf ears in heaven because Jesus' work on the cross paid our sin debt in full. Therefore, God always sees in his children the, the, the perfect righteousness of Jesus. Robert Murray McChain, that great 19th century Scottish minister, said, If I could hear Christ praying for me in the next room, I would not fear a million enemies. Yet the distance makes no difference. He is praying for me. Of course, I, I guess we, we wonder, yeah, we, we wonder 
what Jesus would pray when he's praying for us. I guess it's the same as he prayed for his disciples while he was on earth. That lovely high priestly prayer in John 17 highlights so many things that Jesus prays to the Father for his uh, followers to know God and his son Jesus Christ, that they wouldn't abandon their faith, that they would be one in spirit as the Father and Son are one, that they would be filled with his joy, that they would be kept from the evil one, that they would be made holy through God's word, that they would be united in Christ throughout all generations, that they would let their love convey Christ's message to the world and join him in heaven for all eternity and experience the same kind of love for each other that the Father and the Son share and there's so much more. And if that is the case, what are we going to do? Well, let's trust him, shall we? Let's obey him. Let's serve him. Let's love him. Let's bow at his feet and acknowledge that he is Lord and a blessing to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and for evermore. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. blessings Jesus you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do I just want you
Thank you very much, Jake, for one more message. Jake is being so faithful. Uh, I mean, just encourage him to be with us every week. And he's been responding in a good way. So thank you very much for your encouraging message. Beautiful message. So uh, can, I, can I ask you to pray for Jake? Because Jake will be preaching on Sunday. Uh, the second message of the series, The Greatest Love. And Jiki will be sharing about love that protects, based in John, Gospel of John, chapter 10. If you, if you read John 10, I'm sure you'll be prepared for this coming Sunday, 10 a.m., on this Facebook page, in our YouTube, YouTube Grosvenor Church channel, uh, Dick will be sharing uh, God's message with us. So pray for Dick, pray for his message, please. I want you to people be touched, be blessed, be saved, in Jesus' name. Again, Jack Elmore, thank you very much for this amazing song. So I hope you have a blessed day. And uh, everything you are committed to do today, I pray asking God to give you guidance and direction. We hope to see you yes. tomorrow. Hapa Stan again here in Jesus' name. Bye. Bye. Bless you.